Ito ang Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang naiba at kakaibang plataforma sa digital broadcast. Mula Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao hanggang sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo. Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang sandigan ng sambayanan mula sa walang labis at walang kulang na pagbabalita, paglilingkod, maglalahad ng mga mapagbuong komentaryo at usaping pambayan para sa kapakanan ng karamihan. Broad Streamcast Communicators, tuwirang maglilingkod ngayon hanggang sa susunod na henerasyon. Buhay online, sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Ating tunghayan, pakinggan at tuklasin ang mga pangyayari at kaganapan sa mundo ng online. Buhay online, sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Alamin ang pinakalates trends mula sa trabaho at kung hanggang sa anak ang narating ng teknolohiyang ito. At ngayon, narito na ang ating host, ang ating techie mommy, si J.C. Bautista. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning everyone. Welcome po to Buhay Online. Uh, it's a uh, palagi na lang ako na, na happy Tuesday po happy Tuesday ay ano ba yan happy Tuesday happy Monday what am I talking about happy Monday everyone I trust po at magkat po kayo ng magandang weekend uh, and, uh, I hope some people had a restful weekend hindi naman po masyadong mainit dito sa pagbaga ng weekend in fact umulan pa and um, I hope uh Everyone safe. At saka kahit na po, sulit in the whole world, no? Yung Omicron is spreading really, really fast. In fact, you know, in the hospital school in Japan, you know, it's like in the hundreds of thousands. Can you believe it? Sa, you know, sa, sa Tokyo alone. Grabe, pero for some reason, kahit na it's spreading fast, my students were saying that when I asked them kung how they spent their weekend, Uh, some of them were in the mall because nga, nagpapalamig because ang init-init. There, there's there, there, may heat waves in Japan and, and even sa ano, di ba? Sa France, uh, Europe also, it's been very hot. And also, I have students in South Africa and in the like, Serbia. Sa so Serbia, 40, 40 degrees, 40-something. And even in sa South Africa naman, napakalamig. Uh, They're having the legang sobrang sobrang na make. And in Australia, it's fun. I think it's winter now. But anyway, so climate change is happening. Kaya weird yung mga weather. Hindi unpredictable. But uh, at least, dito, you know, hindi masyado mainit. I never imagined yan mas mainit pa sa Japan. We have some Uh, cool weather nito pag magaling araw pag magaling kasi nga nag-uunan but uh, like today it's uh, mahinit today it's 33 degrees here so it's mahinit kaya yan nakabukas ang AC talagang pataas yung mga electric bill dahil summer na mahinit but anyway first things first of course you know we talk about What's happening muna here in our country? Uh, starting with okay, okay, the COVID situation here in the Philippines. Well, 10 provinces. Pero siyempre, una muna, when we talk about nothing that happened, it's just really very sad. Yan ang technology. Eh. We, we, we couldn't find out the news as it happens. We don't have to buy a newspaper nowadays to physically know. What happens? Kaya nga, very sad sa eskwela ko ng anak ko sa Pineo. Can you imagine? Sa kanyari lang nung si, si yung ex-prime minister ng Japan, si Abe, was shot also in broad daylight, di ba? By an assailant na nasa likod niya. Yun naman yung security locks talaga. Well, 
Ito na naman, hindi mo in-expect, right? Graduation ceremonies ng, ng Ateneo, ng law school. At yun, yung, yung gantan, yung sila, yun, siyempre, could have been a parent or whatever, I don't know, pero doktor, hindi naman siya sila taga Manila. Yun na, that, that, that gunman, yun na tayong pumatay doon sa ex-mayor ng Masila. But anyway, that's really, really sad. But, in fact, nowadays, di ba parang hindi naman natatakot na broad daylight in front of other people? I think parang na siya naging ano, yung kamikaze na wala siya makita. Because now he's in custody alive. Uh, and uh, inamin naman niya that he actually did it. And he's a doctor. But anyway, so going back to uh, further of the day, you know, 10 provinces hit very high COVID-19 positivity rate. As of today po ito, uh, 10 provinces registered very high COVID-19 positivity rates or more than 20% as of July 22 compared to July 16 data. The OCTA research group said yesterday, okay? OCTA fellow Guido David said the provinces with very high positivity rates as of July 22 were ito mga Aklan at 32.6%, Tapis 31.9%, Nueva Ecija 30.5%, Isabela 27.8%, Pampanga hala 26.1%, Laguna 26%, Cavite 24.5%, Tarlac 24%, Rizal 22.8%, and Antique 22.2%. Very high positivity rates. More than 20% were observed in Cavite, Laguna, Rizal, Pampanga, Nueva Ecija, Tarlac, Aklan, Antigua, Capiz, and Isabela. Yan po. Ah. Naniniwala ko dyan, dahil dito pa sa Pampanga, matagal na pa yung mga tao parang walang dito. Virus. Kung mag-gather. Mag- 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 Last week, he said that in provinces where the positivity rate is very high, or above 20%, the public is strongly advised to practice necessary caution to prevent SARS-CoV-2 infection. According to the VIA, the National Capital Region's one-week positivity rate, yan pa sa NCR po, climbed up from 12.7% on July 16 to 14% on July 22. NCR has the biggest number of COVID-19 cases, 1,324 as of July 23. A total of 274 new cases were reported in Quezon City, followed by Manila, Makati, Taguig, Paranaque, Pasig, and Las Piñas. Okay? So, yun pa rin. So, Manila pa rin ang mas pinakamarami. David said the number of people testing positive for COVID-19 in NCR further increased at the end of last week. Ayun nga, it was expected. Hindi naman kasi nakikinig, no? COVID cases surpassed 27,000. Meanwhile, the Department of Health, or DOH, recorded an additional 3,657 COVID cases as the highly infectious disease surpassed the 27,000 mark nationwide. Okay? DOH said the additional cases pushed to 3,752,534, 3, total number of confirmed COVID cases nationwide. Of the total cases, DOH said, 27,116 are active, while 3,644,735 have recovered from the illness. Matangs naman po talaga ang recovery rate. NCR posted the, the most number of new cases in the last 14 days with 12,077, followed by Calabarzon with 7,574, and Western Visayas with 2,440. Despite the continuing rise in COVID cases, okay, the DOH reported that the hospital bed occupancy remains low at 24%. Kasi nga po, yan ang truth we told. Mga positive for COVID, hindi na ho in-hospital lahat. Most of, most of them po, lalo na yung Omicron, just uh, quarantine at home for two weeks, at least 10 days. Tapos mag-antigen at mag-test. At nawawala na. Hindi na po kinakailangan punta sa hospital at pakasahin mo. Kasi po, hindi masyado severe yung symptoms na itong Omicron. So, bahay na lang po nagpapagaling. That's why the hospital bed occupancy rate remains low at 24%. Okay? 
Hello, I'd like to welcome uh, people to my online. Hindi ko nakikita ko yung mga pangalan sa phone ko or even uh, in my screen. I don't see uh, who's there to say hello. So, hello nga. Hello. Can you please type something so I see? Hello there. Nakikita ko na yung pinatype ko eh. Anyway, so... Okay. So, yan nga, di ba? Nagkaroon po ng COVID, ng COVID ang bagong presidente ng Pilipinas. Tapos si Biden din po, may COVID. President sa Amerika, mayroon din COVID. President Joe Biden's, Joe Biden's symptoms have improved and its key vital signs including blood pressure, uh, remain stable, no? Okay naman po. Uh, the 79-year-old U.S. leader tested positive for COVID-19. Ngayon nga po, actually, when you think about it, nagiging normal na lang na marinig na yung kakilala mo nagka-COVID. No? It's a, it just becomes such a common thing, and at the same time, we are actually po uh, living with the virus, and we are being resilient and we are actually moving on with our lives hindi kasi natin po naman pwedeng itigil yung, yung buhay natin at pamumuhay dahil, dahil sa COVID you know? that is the reason why I think most people that in, even in other countries are not so worried about it anymore because we have learned to live with this virus it's been more than two years okay? so uh, ayan po ang my uh, the virus situation in the Philippines. But as far as education is concerned, naman po, nire-review pa po yung tungkol sa K-12 na merong move na parang gusto patanggal ng ating vice president. Uh, but it's, it's still under review, okay? Senator uh, Bongo has welcomed the proposal to review the K-12 program the Department of Education is implementing, noting that it has both benefits and drawbacks. I welcome any review on the existing K-12 program. In the light of our situation, now that many of our uh, ways have changed because of the COVID pandemic. Ito pong sinabi ni Senator Bongo during an interview after providing assistance to indigent Davao residents last week. Go said the country must adjust, okay, the country must adjust to the new normal. We are already, we've been adjusting. And that the education system must be capable of meeting the demands of the post-pandemic global economy. Let us adapt to the new system of education, to the new normal. Let us review the K-12 program very carefully, especially now that our students are behind for two years. Kaya nga, totoo naman eh, yung mga nag-aaral, kunyari, yung mga from home, yung mga bata hindi nag-aaral talaga. Papasok sila ngayong August na walang alam, right? Uh, hi there, Ali Pia. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not sure if it's Miss or Mr. Ali, but uh, hello, Ali Pia. Okay, so, diba, yung, yung mga bata na na nag-module o nag- oh, iba sa kanila pinag hindi na nag no? Parang wala silang natutunan this past two years or nag-stagnate. Press. Vice President and Education Secretary Sarah Duterte and President Marcus have given instructions to review the program. In connection to this point, tungkol ka pag-aaral, pinag-usapan natin, naalala niyo po, yung palagi kong ginigas dito po si John Hendricks Blackup, yung ano, son po of my, my partner and my fiancé. Congratulations to uh, to uh, to John Hendricks po. <laughs> ano po siya, top honors sa school. Ang average ng bata ay 93. Very good. Yan po. And, and he's a product of studying sa module po. Module lang pag-aaral nila. And nag-face-to-face na po sila. Balik na po. The public schools, most of them are face-to-face na. Okay? So, the Commission on, on Higher Education has also previously stated that it is interested in reviewing the effectiveness of the K-12 program. GO has long been advocating for the improvement of the country's education system. 
He co-authored the bill which became Republic Act 11510, which institutionalizes the alternative learning system and improves the delivery of basic education to, to the underdeserved and disadvantaged. The law provides the support lacking for typically under-represented uh, uh, under students, such as Shima indigenous students, students from less privileged backgrounds, and students with physical and learning disabilities. During his visits to the communities in crisis, Go has also been distributing fab tablets to students in order to assist them in the blended learning program implemented sa mga skwelahan. Okay? So yan po, nagawa ni Senator Bongo naman. No? Okay? Alright, so now, let's talk about uh, no, ano naman ang nangyayari sa ibang countries. Okay? Uh, Diba? Parang, hello there, Miss Alicia. So, she's a lady. Hello po. Good morning, Miss Ali. Where are you? Where are you um coming from? Nasaan ka po sa, sa habang ikaw ay nanonood sa amin at nakikinig? Where is Miss Ali from? Welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming. Okay? So, uh, di ba pinag-usapan po yung tungkol sa tungkol sa I was staying I was staying I was staying na na kasi ako na na ba parang yung mga kalamit isun na tungo talaga ng yari or mga whatever is happening to the world yan na naman oh you're in Australia oh my goodness hello there is Ali my brother lives in Australia <clears throat> I heard it's it's very cold in Australia right now thank you for watching my brother lives there sa Malapit sa Paramount, I think. In, uh, yes, in Sydney. My brother's in Sydney. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Miss Ali. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. So, so um, before the pandemic happened, the ba, no, 2018, nagkaroon ng, nagkaroon ng, nagkaroon ng, what we call this, Forest fire sa California, umulit na naman. Kasi, ang sa summer, diba? Sa summer, yung dry yung heat sa Amerika, eh. parang malutong yung mga, whatever, yung mga dry lands, yung mga forest, yung mga leaves dry, yan. So, this is, that's right, it's winter in Australia. Di ba po, down under yun, baliktad ang kanilang season, eh. It's very cold there. I know I spoke to a student of mine yesterday who lives in Australia. Some mornings now, nag-be below zero dyan. Tapos pagka, pagka umagang ganito, mga 12. That is so cold. Very extreme weather. But thank you, thank you for coming. It's Ali. Thank you, thank you. So as I was saying, uh, sa California po, ayan na naman, there's the forest fires again in California. Thousands have been evacuated, okay, because of this fire. Kasi pag mainit, umiinit na kasi, right? Uh, firefighters deployed air uh, tankers, mga bulldozers. Kasi po, karo na naman ng fires. Thousands evacuated as California's oak fire spread towards Yosemite. Yosemite po ang magandang Ano yan eh, uh, National Park, one of the attractions, okay? Uh, uh, kasi nga, so, nagsispread na po yung apoy hanggang sumabot na sa Yosemite. Oh my goodness. Huwag naman. But the fast-moving wildfire is going towards west of Yosemite National Park. Sa hapon po. It suddenly grew into one of the largest fires of the year, forcing thousands of evacuations. Evacuations. Fueled by extreme heat. So po, Dahil yung sa init, kasi ang mga forest, mga, 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 mga leaves, lumulutong. Talagang dry heat po kasi sa Amerika eh. Na pagka meron lang mag, ano, ng, ng sigarilyo or something, mag, magsusunog na. So ito, sabi nila, this is fueled by extreme heat and underbrush. The oak fire that began on Friday pa, Friday pa nagsimula yung sunog na yan sa uh, California, closed within half a mile, uh, from the town of Mariposa Pines, 
population is 1,400, but was still more than 10 miles 16 from Yosemite, famed for its giant ancient ilan po yung mga sequoia trees. Nat kami nagpa-camping noon sa, sa Yosemite, sa nalalaki ng puno. As of Sunday morning, the fire had consumed 14,281 acres. Oh my God. More than half the size of Paris. Ganun ka, kalayo na yung umabot yung apoy. Okay? And was 0% contained. So mo hindi, hindi po uminto yung apoy mula Friday hanggang kahapon. According to the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, more than 3,000 people were under mandatory evacuation orders and another 2,000 were under a fire advisory meaning they could soon be ordered to leave. Firefighters had the most success establishing fire retention lines on the western side of the fire. But the fire also encroached further east toward the town of Mariposa Pines and in the direction of Yosemite. Uh, okay? The fire is roughly about a half a mile away from Mariposa Pines at this time. There are people doon, 1,400 town population. Eh, no, malapit na yung apoy sa kanila. So, baka kailangan na nilang mag-evacuate. But we have a good plan for today to protect the community of Mariposa Park. The cause of the fire, okay, still remain, remains under investigation. Okay? Yosemite, about an hour's drive from Mariposa County, is home to some of the largest and oldest sequoia trees in the world. Opo, ayan po ang puntahan ng mga malalaking puno yung sequoia. Matandang, matandang puno na. The trees had been threatened by another wildfire earlier this month, but firefighters managed to save them. More than two decades of drought and rising temperatures have conspired to make California more, more vulnerable than ever to wildfire. Yun na nga, nangyari na yan two years ago before the pandemic. Yung talaga yung brush fire, yun yung sobra from north to south. Na umabot yung fire na yun. Hindi lang days, kundi weeks. Nakulay orange yung sky na alala ko pa. With the two most devastating years on record coming in 2020 and 2021, talaga, when we're, uh, when we're more than 6.8 million acres or 2.75 million hectares burned, an area greater than the size of Rwanda. See, mas, mas, mas malaki pa sa isang country yung extent ng sunog na yun. Okay? So yung ngayon, alas kalahati na ng Paris, yung size ng Tulo. Oh my God. Okay. So, um, alright. So, uh, excuse me. Huh. Excuse me. Okay, so there you go. Then, uh, let's talk about technology or and social media technology. Okay, alam po natin na before the Elon Musk was trying to buy Twitter, tapos piglam binawi niya po yung forty-four billion deal niya. So dinedemanda ngayon ng Twitter si Elon Musk for reneging on that deal, pero See, uh, see Elon Musk, alam niyo naman po, he's the world's richest man. He's the richest man in the world. Okay? Anyway, uh, Twitter says Musk uncertainty hurting revenue. Totoo naman, talaga. Uh, Twitter blamed disappointing results Friday on headwinds, including the uncertainty imposed on the company by Elon Musk's chaotic buyout bid. Kasi nga nang umatras po siya. Naapektuhan naman ang stocks ng Twitter. At, uh, the firm is locked in a legal battle with the mercurial Tesla boss over his effort to walk away from the $44 billion deal to purchase the Twitter platform, leaving the company in limbo. Yan nga. Eh, matras na nga eh, actually. Wait, I'll just remove this for its fire. So now, okay na nga. Okay na nga siya siya, right? Anyway, so yeah, I was saying, kumurong na nga siya from the $44 billion buyout. Twitter missed expectations with revenue of $1.18 billion due to advertising industry headwind. Ako nga, kasi tumaas yung kanilang stocks nung in-announce na bibilin. Tapos nga, 
habang tumatagal tapos ba hanggang sa binawi na you know bumaba yung stocks na Twitter right okay so uh, due to advertising industry headwinds as well as uncertain rates and certainly uncertainty related to the pending acquisition of Twitter and affiliate of Elon Musk the company reported okay then go so also in the current context of tightening credit conditions and economic turbulence Many companies like Twitter that rely heavily on ads are suffering from a decrease in advertisers' budget. So, yan po, nag-alisan yung mga ibang advertisers. Twitter is on a rowboat in the middle of a storm. Ito ang sinabi ni Jasmine Enberg, isang analyst. The mask saga rocks the boat even harder. Ito. Twitter is now in the enviable position of convincing advertisers that its ad business is solved. Twitter also reported that the number of monetizable daily active users, those who can be shown advertising, increased by 8.8 million, less than expected by analysts to 237.8 million. Overall, we would characterize the daily active user metrics as better than feared and holding up relatively firm in this environment. Despite the less than stellar results, Twitter stock closed up nearly percent, nearly one percent, at thirty nine point eighty four dollars uh, share. As investors seemed re- relieved, the news wasn't worse. By comparison, Snap's stock fit, finished down thirty nine percent a day after the parent company of messaging app Snapchat reported disappointing earnings. Na wala na pasay na yung Snapchat na nagkaroon ng TikTok, di na nagsa Snapchat mga tao. Snapchat, ano lang eh, short-lived yung kanyang fame, right? Twitter's results covered the period ending in June, so don't include Musk's news in July to try to terminate the deal of an argument on the argument that the platform was not forthcoming about its tally of fake accounts. The social media network, which is a key exchange of ideas, news, and entertainment, has countered by saying the Tesla chief already agreed to the deal and can't back out now. Twitter believes that Mr. Musk's purported termination is invalid and wrongful, and the merger agreement remains in effect. It said in the earnings report. So, so at this point, na- nasa limbo po ang Twitter. Okay? Twitter notched a victory earlier this week in its fight with Musk when a judge agreed to a fast-track trial on whether to force the billionaire to complete the buyout or not. Okay? Musk's lawyers had pushed for a February 2023 date, but the court in the eastern U.S. state of Delaware hewed closely to the uncertainty rack platforms desired for speed and set an October start. Okay? Billions of dollars are at stake, but so is the future of Twitter, which Musk has said should allow any legal speech. While the deal remains in limbo, Twitter is left with anxious employees. Siyempre naman sigurado, yung mga empleyado na nanenervous na. Wary advertisers and hamstrung management. In early May, at an annual marketing event where companies negotiate large advertising deals, Twitter was not able to give advertisers any clarity or confidence that it would continue to be safe showcase for them. Tapos sinabi nila whether or not binili ng hindi, diba? Nung magkocommit sila sa quality ng kanilang establishment. Twitter was not able to give advertiser any clarity or confidence that would continue to be safe showcase for them. Angelo Carusson, president of Watchdog Group Media Matters, told AFP previously, they didn't go anywhere close to what normally sells at the event, and it's obviously begun sluggish since then. The San Francisco-based social work cannot afford to lose customers. Okay? Unlike a big fish such as Google and Facebook, parent Meta, which dominate online advertising and make billions in profits, Twitter lost hundreds of millions of dollars in 2020 and 2021. Okay? Very sad. Okay? So, yun po ang nangyari tungkol sa pagbibid ni Elon Musk sa Twitter. Ang Twitter po ang nagsuffer dyan, di ka tumurong sila, bumaba ang stocks nila. That's the, that's the name of the game, you know? Okay? So I'd like to, uh, you know, welcome, of course, suggestions for, if you have suggestions for um, topics to talk about or you want me to feature 
certain personalities here to help us talk about certain topics or if you want it featured, please feel free to contact me, email or email me at techimami at gmail.com or, uh, or drop me a, a line here, a messenger, or on my Facebook page, JC Bautista. Okay, and, also, and of course, dito po sa Broad Stream Cast Communicators, okay? Pwede naman dyan talaga mag-iwan ang message, okay? All right. So, so that's the, the thing about uh, about Twitter. Let's go back number two. In a second, this is going to be a lag na internet. Okay, from one uh, social media uh, matter to another. Okay, let me just show you what I'm going to talk about. Okay, I should put this back. Okay. Meta's Facebook revamping main feed to attract younger users. Okay. What is this all about? Healthy? No, no, no. no. What's it all about? Well, that's one of my favorite old classics in Healthy. Especially when you're like a segue, segue, I'm always into something. It must be. You know, I'm not diagnosed ADHD, but you know, people have been telling me that I display the symptoms because I can't keep still and I'm always listless, right? But uh, of course, until I am uh, examined, I, I cannot really fully say that I do have it. But yes, I know I display the symptoms of one having it. You see, I'm multitasking, uh, jumping from one topic to another, kind of going back to Anyway, so from one social media topic to another, I was talking about Twitter. Ayon naman po Meta's Facebook revamping main feed para magattract ng mga younger users. Because kung ayon nasabi ng mga boomers lang daw na Facebook o talaga na sa Facebook, sabi ng mga bata ng mga bigets, right? So Meta's Facebook is revamping main feed to attract new users. What, what does it mean, right? Meta platforms or Facebook. Said on Thursday, it was revamping the main feed on its Facebook app to prioritize discovery of new content instead of posts from accounts users follow. A bid to style its apps after short form video competitor TikTok. Ayan na nga. Ta-da! Dahil sa TikTok, naayusin na yung content, right? Meta executives have voiced increasing urgency in recent months around boosting the company's Reels product. Similar to TikTok. Yung Reel, yung nakikita niyo pong mga Reels, hindi yung TikTok. Diba? Meta yun. Similar to TikTok, short video format that has attracted many younger users. Okay? Hindi yung TikTok yung nakikita niyo sa Facebook niyo na naka-intrude minsan yung nandun sa mga my day, yung Reels. Ano yan? Meta. Meta product. Hindi yan siya TikTok. Okay? Alright. So anyway, this format has attracted many younger users. Okay? Call Facebook's main newsfeed tab that users will see when they open the app to start more heavily featuring popular posts from accounts that users do not follow. Including reels and stories, by Meta said in a statement. Okay. Facebook will suggest posts to users with its machine learning ranking system and is investing in artificial intelligence to serve recommended content if added. A new separate tab called Feeds will offer a version of the old approach, which overwhelmingly features posts from friends, pages, and groups. That users actively choose to follow. Okay. It's a tapos on feeds in that tab will be presented chronologically without personalized ranking. Okay. Chief uh, Executive Officer Mark Zuckerberg said in a Facebook post that Meta said the feeds will not include suggested posts but will still have advertisement. Okay. All right. 
So yan po ang sinasabi ng Facebook. No? The world's biggest social media company has gone all, all in on an algorithmic recommendation in recent months as the threat from TikTok has grown. Talaga namang um, TikTok ang ano, in thing nowadays, right? So in recent months, as, as uh, the threat from TikTok has grown, a stark change from its 2018 plan to feature more posts from friends and family in the new feed. Okay? So magiging para na lang siya. It's its Instagram app announced, okay, tests of a more immersive TikTok style viewing experience in May, while Zuckerberg told invested, uh, investors in April that Meta was making significant advancements to support the discovery engine approach. Okay. Earlier this month, Chief Product Officer Chris Cox told employees there was a plan to increase fivefold the number of graphic processing units in its data centers by the year end to provide extra computing. Grabe yung ano, 3D printing and stuff. All right. Uh, Doon po sa mga nakakamiss ng mga all ng mga episodes in the program here on the uh, Broadstreet Best Communicators. We are, we have broadcasting from 7 in the morning to 11 at night at every hour of the hour in my phone. Mga broadcasters and will bring you news and information that's happening around the world in the Philippines. And of course, uh, we, uh, we use technology to, to broadcast to you guys live and, and um, hindi man ito face-to-face, at least nakakapalang nakakapalang tayo ng TV or ng news dito nakakapakinig tayo because of technology. Right? Okay. Uh, okay. Today, I'm going to uh, talk about we will start the series on gender equality, okay? Kasi mapaspon na lang, paspon itong issue na ito. But then I will uh, at least talk about it in a little bit to start the ball rolling on this issue. And then we, we, I will be having guests and panelists who are on Wednesday or Thursday uh, to talk about gender equality. But, okay, somebody text, who, uh, you know, Ano daw ang situation ng gender equality so based dito sa Philippines? I think the Philippines is pretty much accepted by right? gender equality. Dito ang dami-dami naman dito. Yung mga housewives, na hindi na lang housewife, no? At sa trabaho rin. Or, you know, if uh, the kids are not small yet, pwede na pwede na magtrabaho yung mga. So, because of a two-income family, of course, it's better than just one, right? So, I hope it's okay. Anyway, so the question is, how do you promote gender equality in the workplace? In this, uh, in this uh, broadcast, we don't just want to give you ways to empower women in the office, but we also discuss why gender inequality exists in the workplace, di ba? Bakit? Di ba? Kailangan paging ganun sa kapal. The capabilities are the same. Okay? Physical attributes are ang pinag-usap dyan. Okay? So, how do we promote gender equality in the workplace? Let's start. Companies with more women among their most compensated staff have more favorable employee results. Okay? That often happens when at least one third of the ladies are among the highest paid, 10% higher paid executives. Okay? Applying gender equality in the workplace won't be a, a easy task. Okay? Bakit sabihin nyo? Companies with more women amongst them Compensated staff among their most comp- uh, compensated staff still have more favorable employee attitudes. Okay? 
Applying gender equality in the workplace is not easy, but it is a matter of equal opportunities that will benefit your business. Dipin niyo po na lang, no? Kung wala kayong pinapangasimik parang kumukontra sa gender equality. Companies will claim to be all about gender diversity, but is there a meaningful implementation and progress? Nakikita ba natin ito sa ating bansa? I think so. But in in Japan, you know, it's not so much um, uh, practiced or accepted. As you do in Japan, the mga babae, kahit na pareho sila mga, mas mababa yung smell na kesa sa lalaki. And why is that so? Why is that so? You know? Kasi kailangan maging ganun. Kaya pareho ang kapasidad. Companies will claim to be all about gender equality or diversity. But what's important is that you you know, you don't just preach it. You 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 walk the walk. The mindset, I mean, you walk the walk. Okay. Companies will claim to be all about proper diversity, but is there a meaningful implementation uh, and progress? At the office, it's indispensable to your business success. Pwede natin, no? Gender equality at the office is indispensable. To your business success, okay? Success on a year. Do you agree with that? Despite the challenging global patriarchy, women still receive lesser pay than their male counterparts. Okay, we were just talking about. Also, due to gender biases, women are still underrepresented uh, in leadership positions. It is a, it is 2022. And we still feel a uh, see single gender dominating company. So, it's 2022, but for sure. If, if there's no awareness, campaign to make it uh, be more known, and para ma emphasize the Manila needs, you know, why don't they invest in that? Right? Um, so, um, according to the Global Gender Index Research, Developing countries dominate the bottom 20%. That means that representation of women in these countries is lower than that of men. Okay? So why is it like that, Emma? It is because of a lack of awareness. Lack of awareness. That's what I said, Emma. We have to make it known. Or do companies fail to realize the impact of uh, gender discrimination in the workplace? Keep, uh, so yeah, no? Mahirap na to say that, you know, you're 100% supporting that because some employers just don't tell you. But sometimes, sometime uh, in the future, banda must be. So, with that said, okay, uh, to employ. What do we do to promote gender equality in the workplace? Okay. Uh, okay. To uh, to promote that, it's simply to make it known, right? uh, I, uh, What do you call this? Arouse the interest. Or arouse the interest by letting them know. This is a real, a real issue nowadays. Gender equality. Mm. Anyway, let's give way to more questions. Okay. Una una, Rian, what is gender equality? Tama, hindi ko naman kasi sinabi at the beginning of this uh, series. Before knowing how to promote gender equality, let us first, okay, tama, comprehend the relationship between gender and birth. Okay? In simple words, gender equality refers to the equal rights and opportunities for working women and men. Okay? We value both men and women's needs equally. Note, we often discuss gender equity and gender equality uh, simultaneously for that reason. Huh? Society favors men. Tanggapin na natin to. Society favors men and they have many advantages. Like Equity fills in that gap so everybody can catch up to that. Amen. 
Okay. Also, all genders must receive fair responsibilities and access to every available resource at work. That all translates, uh, diba? like sila sabi nga, diba? lahat dapat uh, may responsibilidad. Dahil pantay-pantay. At dapat may access din to every available resource. Ito na nga. Everyone has flexible hours irrespective of gender. So, yan. We make our own time. We make we make our own um, diba? schedule. Okay? So, everyone feels safe to work without gender discrimination in the workplace. Siyempre naman, diba? Dino naman gusto magtagbaka sa mga panibigotid or prejudice sila or they discriminate upon them. Nakaka-stress din. Okay? Uh, everyone feels safe to work without gender discrimination in the workplace. Diverse employees feel empowered and safe when working with a team. Ito naman yan. Pero yun nga, kung nag-homeschool ka, wala ka makita ka ng four corners ng kwarto mo, bawal lumabas, talaga, you won't be surprised na naman dyan. You'll drop like flies, right? Okay, so, uh, employee appreciation and equal opportunity. So yan nga, we are lucky that we still have work, you know, you know, when a lot of people have lost their jobs in this pandemic. But if you're, we are a resilient lot, we rise above our, our, uh, you know, our infirmities. Okay? So, getting back to tips ko na to, similar learning and training opportunities in the company. Okay? Nakuna remove the, the general pay gap. Okay? Tumagagawa, right? And, um, okay, similar learning and training opportunities in the company. Having strict company policies that prohibit power abuse and sexual harassment. Gender equality makes everyone feel safe to pursue the same job without the fear of discrimination. Okay? That makes people across the world and uh, that makes people from across the team work together, hence the collaborating process. No? dapat mag-collaborate equally. Tapos, the institution treats staff members fairly and with respect. The staff also have equal opportunities for career program, progression and promotion. But the effect of the pandemic may reverse the progress or gender equality for women's rights. COVID-19 aggravates existing inequalities for women across the world. That is from the economy, health, security, and social protection. Okay? So yun po, ang ito po sa, sa gender equality, no? Despite the progress through the decades, okay? Gender inequality remains distant, okay? Research shows that it will take a century to close the global pay gap. Yun na, ito yung tungkol sa trabaho. Mas maliit ang sweldo ng babae. Pero, ayan na, sinabi ng mga research, it will take a century, a whole century, no? To close the global pay gap. Oh my God, kaya Pakinwento ko ngayon na the Trabal Pax America and I made the same title as my colleagues there. I was the director of Asian Operation in direct marketing. Tapos yung sweldo ko, hindi ka pareho nung kapareho kong posisyon dahil lalaki siya. So I question that. In America, naman kasi talaga. You can question that. You can, you know, ask for an explanation or say that bakit siya pareho lang naman kami na achievement pala kami ng post, iba yung sweldo ng talaki. Well, of course, sinabi kasi siya, he went to Harvard, uh, he went to Stanford, uh, education, ginawang excuse. Pero hello, yung trabaho namin, pala yung mas marami pa kung work kanya. Saka yung resulta ng productivity was pala yung, if not better. Right? So, mayroon talagang gender equality, inequality, sorry. Okay? So tomorrow we will talk about this even further or actually hindi pa lang sa Thursday papatuloy po natin. So with again lang po kayo na overview about gender equality that we that uh, has long been requested by uh, somebody mga ibang tao na nag-email at nag-text to us if we could tackle that issue of gender inequality. Okay? So 
ano ba yung components of gender inequality sa tapa? Okay? Then ako magkatapos yun by telling you this. Both men, both men and women may face issues about gender inequality in the workplace. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. Pareho. Both men and women uh, face issues about gender inequality in the workplace. Though women always deal with this issue more than men. Talaga naman, mas, mas, mas nagreklamo yung mga babae na hindi fair yung pagsasweldo. Okay? Ah, okay, Miss Alicia. In Australia daw, mas malaki ang sweldo ng basurero kaysa sa bank teller. Mas marumi ang trabaho dito. Mas malaki ang sweldo. Kaya may mga babae na bricklayers. Tama, tama. See? Sa Amerika din, right? Yung, yung, ano yan eh, yung mga menial jobs. Dito sa atin, basurero, cartero, post, uh, post, postman, uh, mabababa ang sweldo, di ba? Sa Amerika, sa Australia rin pala, Amerika, the basurero, matat ang sweldo, the post, the post, uh, yung mga nag-deliver ng mail, kartero, matas ang sweldo. Compared sa, yun nga, compared sa, uh, I mean, hindi comparison sa, basta ganun talaga sa Amerika din, yung mga trabaho, matas sweldo. Tama. Ganun din pala sa Australia, I didn't know that. But, uh, but dito sa Pilipinas, yung trabaho ang ganun, sobrang plate ang sweldo. Yun ang tinatawag na the menial jobs, right? Yung mga physical na mataas ang sweldo nyo. Kasi may risk na involved din. Diba? Physically, mas mapawit sa masarap sa pakiramdam. No? Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So, uh, both men and women face the, that issue of gender inequality. So, pero we identify gender inequality at work through these things. Okay? Paano natin ma- ma- sa natin mabibase yung gender inequality? Sa pay. Okay. Ah, totoo, totoo, Ali, sa Pilipinas talaga, yung mga menial trabaho, sobrang baba yung sweldo. Eh, mabibigat na trabaho yun, right? Sabi mo nga, o oh, bricklayer, yung mga nag- naglalapat ng semento, o oh, mga babae, kasi yun, yung construction workers, yung mga ganyan, matataas yung sweldo po. Basta physical yung job sa Amerika rin, at sa Australia rin pala, oh. Sabi ni Ms. Ali, ang pangit ng job discrimination sa Pilipinas. Tolaga, todo, sobra. Okay? So, kung saan nakikita yung, where, where do we see gender inequality? Yun sa pay. Okay? Sa sweldo. The wage gap persists to be a massive part of gender inequality at work. We characterize the pay gap by one gender receiving less pay for doing the same job as the other gender. Kagaya nga sinabi ko sa inyo. Eh. Sinabi ko sa, sa boss ko sa Amerika, ba't ganun? Pero kami yung vice president ng, ng ako sa direct Asian operations ng department siya rin doon sa Amerika. Tapos yung sweldo namin ng layo. Pero ang sinabi sa akin kasi siya Stanford graduate ito hindi. Pero yung trabaho namin, the same. Mas marami pa nga ako. Because my job entailed me to travel all the time pa. Okay? But of course, perks and benefits I got, but then it's the pay. So I just actually requested, kung pwede man lang, ilapitin yung sweldo ko sa sweldo ng Amerikano, sa sweldo ng lalaki, right? Because it wasn't even half of his sweldo, my sweldo. So, minigyan naman ako ng raise, pero hindi kasi pareho ng sweldo niya. Mal- linapit ng konti, okay? So, for me, ano na rin yun, win, win ko na yun. At least na sabi ko na hindi fair, okay? Miss Ali says, dito by grade ng job, kinukuha grade ng swelduhan. What does it mean, grade ng job? <clears throat> the, the, the extent of the work? Okay. So according to census data, women in the U.S. receive 82 cents for each dollar men receive as compensation for the same work. So ayun, kung one dollar, so, isang, sa isang dollar ng lalaki, 82 cents lang. At least more than, 82%, no? Pero well, dapat same. Okay? Okay, so sa nakikita yung gender inequality, sa sweldo, sa leadership, right? Pero ang Pilipinas, ilang beses na dalawang babae ng presidente ang nangyari dito, ha? Fairness, okay? Okay? Dalawang presidente na ang nangyari na babae ng Pilipinas. Yan po si Roya Makapagaroy at saka si Ponsot Kino. 
There is also a gender leadership gap. Companies often pass up most women for promotion opportunities. Yeah, no? Pero ang takin hindi nangyari sa Amerika at six promotions in three years. Ah, malik, malik that. Three promotions in six years when I was working there and living there. This is due to gender discrimination in the workplace. Yung, yung mga women, pag unahan sa promotion, inuuna yung lalaki. Last yung mga babae. Research shows that there are many qualified women to fill leadership gaps. But gender bias prevents them from progressing to those positions. Okay? Addressing this at your workplace requires you to support growth opportunities for each employee. You have to widen your recruitment networks and also examine your favorite events, okay? Ato pa, sa hiring, di ba? Sa mga hiring. Male employee, employers will indeed choose to hire male employees in the most cases. But, pero depende rin yan, di ba? Sa, sa mundo ng marketing and, and ano, mga marami kinukuha babae kasi sabi nila mas persuasive ang mga ilag na kung maganda. Also, pero parang ano rin yan, no? Mayroong harassment na yun na parang ginagamit mo yung gender mo. Anyway, also, it is likely for hiring managers to click on male application profiles instead of women. Bakit? Yeah. Through a gender experiment where a male employer was hiring employees, women had only a 40% chance of receiving the job. That means women are at a disadvantage from the beginning of the hiring process pa lang. Even if you have the same experience, skill, and qualifications, they have a disadvantage. Okay? Uh, ah, itong sinasabi ni Ms. Alicia, sinabi niya kasi sa Australia, by grade ang, ang job na kinukuha ng rate ng sanduhan. Like if you are in hospitality, waiting is grade 1. Then housekeeping is grade 2. Mas mataas ang sweldo na housekeeping kesa sa waitressing. Ah, depende sa grade ng job. Okay? Level. Okay? Of course, eh, ganyan din naman sa lahat. You know, depende sa job mo. Pero, Iba yung, yung, yung tungkol sa main yung jobs. But anyway, on this note, I'd like to end this episode. Sorry na wala na tayo ng oras, pero paputuloy po natin to tomorrow regarding gender inequality. Pero yung, uh, if I, pero pag na-verify na- yun to yung guests po, uh, kung mag- mag-pabayat, guess ko sila mas maaga, putulay natin yung pag-uusap or the series about this. But thank you so much for joining me today. This has been Jay Bautista for Buhay Online on a Monday Maraming maraming salamat po. Faith, hope, and love at the end of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Alicia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Inyong natuhayan at napakinggan ang mga makabagong pamamaraan sa mundo ng online. Sa pamamagitan pa rin ng Broad Streamcast Communicators. Hanggang sa muli.